Hello and welcome. You have tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. I'm Shristi Sharma and with me Cheryl D'Souza and viewers, this is the show where you get answers for all your stock-related queries. In a short while from now, we will connect with our experts and you can connect live with us on a WhatsApp number that will be flashing on the top of the screen. Uh, but also on to the markets. Firstly, let's have a look at what the benchmark indices are doing. So Cheryl, record high levels continues on the benchmark indices, but we had a bit slow in trading session today. Not much of for movement but the cheer is definitely there absolutely shishti rightly put it not much movement but the cheer remains when it comes to the benchmark indices we are trading actually pre range bound in trade today now we've actually broken into the positive territory but we are trading flat with the positive buys it's nifty bank that is actually are performing the benchmark indices in trade today with 2 tenths of percent uptick coming in of for our nifty bank uh, if you look at the advanced decline ratio, tad bit in tilted in the favor of the advances. Let's take a look at the list of gainers and the losers in trade today. So you have Titan actually, after a while it's leading uh, with gains on the Nifty with 1.5 or 1.8% 1 uptick for Titan, BPCL, Hero Motocorp, ONGC are the other set of gainers right now. But on the flip side, if you look at the losing end of the market, uh, the IT counters are taking it a bit easy. So you have HCL Tech down 2%, you have a Wipro down 2%. Uh, LTI Mine Tree is down 1%, Tech Mahindra is down 1%, as well as DV's Lab also is actually declining in trade today. So let's take a look at what the sectoral picture is looking like right now then. And uh, talking about the sectoral indices, is the Realty Index as the top sectoral loser, along with the IT and the pharma space, while on the flip side, PSU Bank Index is seeing good strength in trade today and the broader markets are holding on to the positive territory. So that's the way how the markets are looking like at this point in time, uh, Shristi. But yes, uh, today you don't have Reliance Industries actually participating in this up move for the markets. Well, yes, but Reliance Industry is indeed in focus on the back of the brokerage note as well as some of the other telecom players from the likes of Bharti Airtel are also seen to be buzzing. Why that? Because brokerage notes have come in. So let's understand what these brokerages are penciling in. What are the targets that they are coming out for all these telecom players as well as what are they saying on Reliance Industries? Let's get in all these details from my colleague Somit Sarkar. Somit, take it away. Well, if you see the telecom sector, including Reliance Industries, because they have Reliance Geo, which is India's largest telecom company, uh, remains in focus. Now, this is on the back of multiple reports that JP Morgan has come out with. Now, they have also upgraded their rating on Bharti Airtel to neutral from underweight and have hiked the target price to 1100 rupees from 785. And when it comes to Industars, they have upgraded their rating to overweight from neutral and have hiked the target price to 260 from 180. And when it comes to Reliance Industries, they have maintained their overweight rating but have hiked the target price to 3100 from an earlier target price of 2800 also to remember this is the 11th target price on street for Reliance Industries that is above the 3000 uh, level mark now. Now what is this brokerage note saying? Now uh, the interesting part here given by JP Morgan is that they are expecting a tariff hike to come in in the telecom sector in the existing calendar year that is 2024 and that would drive the re-rating not only for Reliance Industries but also for the entire telecom sector. Now they are expecting a 15% telecom tariff hike in the third quarter of FY25 that is by the end of this calendar year. Now do remember that uh, tariff hike is a single biggest trigger when it comes to the telecom sector which could lead to a re-rating and now this is because without a tariff hike the growth that we usually see in the telecom sector is in high single digit but with tariff hike whenever there has been a tariff hike we had seen growth in high double digit for the telecom sector now the first big tariff hike taken in the telecom sector was in December 2019 and the hike that time was around 30 to 35 percent on an average the second big tariff hike was taken in December 2021 and that time the hike was anywhere between 20 to 25 percent also do remember that the tariffs uh, that the telecom tariffs in India is the lowest globally at around two dollar per month even Bangladesh has a higher telecom tariff of around 2.8 dollar per month and all the telecom companies have always reiterated that a tariff hike is must for the telecom sector to revive and grow going forward so keep an eye out for the telecom sector because tariff hike which is the single biggest trigger has now been started incorporating and our brokerages have started incorporating that in their estimates so there might be a tariff hike in this calendar year that is 2024. All right, so that's what the brokerages are penciling in when it comes to uh, the telecom space, uh, uh, hoping that there would be a tariff hike, and they're already penciling in that when it comes to the reliance, when it comes to reliance industry, you saw Bharti Airtel also see a good up move. But uh, let's bring on board our, our experts today. We have Kunal Bothra as well as uh, Rajesh Agarwal joining us on the show, and they'll talk to us more on what should you do when it comes to the telecom plays and whether you should better them right now or no. 
Uh, very good morning, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Kunal, as well as Rajesh, for joining us on ET Now. And uh, Rajesh, you heard uh, actually um, Somit outline what the brokerages are penciling in as a biggest trigger coming in for most of these telecom companies, and that has to be the tariff hike. Uh, well, while for Vodafone Idea, it's it's another story because everybody is hoping that an investor would come in, and uh, problems uh, of uh, Indus Towers hopefully will uh, lessen if an investor comes in for Vodafone Idea. But uh, what's your take coming in on telecom play? Do you think that this trigger enough or hopeful or uh, hope? of a tar tariff hike is enough for someone to bet on telecom space right now? Good morning, Shail. Good morning, Kuna. Uh, as Samit pointed out, tariff hike is imminent and that's a big trigger for uh, company, telecom companies. Although it's a bad news for consumer like us or you, everybody, but it's good news for shareholders. Uh, as far as companies go, uh, we have seen that in the second quarter of uh, uh, FY24, Jio and Airtel have gained market share while Vodafone lost. They uh, Vodafone they gained market share on the cost of Vodafone. Their revenue increased by 10% around, uh, and while the sector revenue increased by 7%. That means they have outperformed the sector as such in second quarter. And with 5G rollout all over, uh, this uh, market share gain would accelerate, I would say. And not to forget that via media, we have come to know uh, this week only that the unlimited 5G which we, they are offering is going to end, uh, come to an end by the second half of this year. So that's good news. Tariff hikes, uh, uh, discontinuation of unlimited 5G, these are good news for the sector as such. And I think uh, as far as um, uh, companies are concerned, one should bet on Reliance not only because of geo, but because of other factors also. We are very bullish in the short term. 3,000 plus is our target, but I would say that one should continue to hold this stock for maybe two years down the line. And we believe that whenever some corporate action like demerger or whatever happens in this stock, it can be it can give multiple returns from what the current price is. All right, so that's the day coming in on all these telecom players. Indeed, not a great news for the consumers. Where in the times ahead, we can expect the tariffs hikes for all these telecom majors. But Kunal, um, we have seen great moves on Reliance for the past four days today. It's uh, having a subdued trading session. But as what's your take on Reliance, Bharti Airtel, as well as any take on Vodafone Idea as well? So good morning, first of all, to all of you. Uh, my sense is Reliance Industries, of course, the stock which is given a classical breakout, looks to be a more powerful one because the stock is coming out, coming out after two years of literally uh, you know, sideways to no price action for itself. So that augurs very well for the stock and the entire sector as such. The stock now uh, almost poised closer to that 2800 mark, which I believe over the next couple of days or maybe in the next one week, the stock should surpass these levels and uh, you know scale past a, a fresh lifetime high for itself. Bharti Airtel has been a very silent kind of a performer. So even if you look at the last three, four years of price movement from 450 levels to now, 1100 plus where the stock has been trading. I think it's been an exceptional mover in the last, uh, you know, uh, many years, especially over the last three to four years. And I still believe that at current levels, it's been more of a consistent performer. So I think Bharti Airtel should also be a part of, uh, you know, someone's, uh, you know, longer term portfolio. And especially uh, if it's focused on large cap name, what of an idea could just be more of a trading bet. Now the stock had a touch and go moments towards uh, I think 8 and a half, 19 plus levels. But from there the stock has settled down back towards the 15, 16 mark for itself. Which means that at best it could be a good trading stock, maybe closer to 18, 18 and a half odd levels. We can expect one more bout of rally for word of an idea. All right, so that's the take coming in uh, from both of our experts, particularly on Reliance Indra, uh, India as well as, sorry, Reliance Industries yes. as well as Vodafone Idea and uh, Bharti Airtel. But on that note, viewers, we slip into a break on this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now. When we come back, we'll start taking your queries. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. You're watching Buy and Sell Now on ET Now, a show where we get to answers for all of your stock-related queries. Remember, viewers, you can connect to us live on the WhatsApp number that will be flashing on your screen. Uh, do remember to mention the name of the stock you're looking to invest in. Mention your name as well. 
uh, mention the pri buy price, quantity as well as the time horizon. In that way, our experts will be able to help you better. Uh, but let me first take quick note of uh, the flash on the bottom of your uh, screen. Remember, Maruti Suzuki did alert in the month of December that they will go ahead and hike prices come January. And that's exactly what they've done. But the quantum of that is substantially lower compared to the previous years. If you see half a percent or almost uh, uptick in their model across model prices from today to be precise, 0.45% is the hike in the model prices that they will take from today onwards. And Maruti Suzuki over there on the fact that they've gone ahead and hiked the prices. The stock is now near the day's highest point, one and a half percent uptick for that particular counter. But uh, like I mentioned, this is a show where we get you answers for your stock related queries. Let's bring on board our uh, experts once again. We have Kunal Botra as well as uh, Rajesh Agarwal on the show. Once again, good morning to both of you gentlemen. And take me, uh, let me take this first uh, query that is coming in from Shashidhar from Hyderabad and his query is on IRFC. He's saying that he, his uh, price is 103 uh, rupees per share. He wants to know whether he should continue to accumulate this particular counter, look to exit, as well as JSW Energy. He wants to know whether uh, what sort of an exit uh, price for this particular counter should he keep in mind. Kunal, 4, 5, 451 is his buy price. So IRFC, uh, I'm not sure uh, that whether you should sell at current levels because the stock is doing exceptionally well. In the la in just the last two days, of course, the stock has climbed from 114 to 146. Uh, the indicators are not as of now extreme overbought, but you know we've seen historically that when stocks go into such kind of a strong rally, they could last for a span of maybe a couple of weeks before these stocks show signs of correction. So maybe what you can do is trail your stop loss to 138.39 for uh, IRFC and keep on holding or riding this trend on the upside till the time it lasts for the stock. For JSW Energy also, I think it's a very similar kind of a chart, even though not exponentially moved up higher. But I think the stock in the last uh, one or two weeks moved from 410, 415 to almost 470, 475 where it tested a couple of days back. Two days of retracement, but the charts are still quite positive for uh, JSW Energy. I would suggest a hold on the stock. Keep a potential target on a very near-term play, closer to 485. All right, uh, moving on then. And uh, the next query, uh, Rajesh, is coming from um, P. Suribabu. He's a senior citizen and holding shares of Balmain Lorry at an average price of 133 rupees. He's been holding this for the past five years. What's the outlook as of now? And should he continue holding this? or book out profits in this one? Good morning, Sashti. Bamalori is actually a very good company in container freight station and different kind of business, travel, tourism, lubricants and all. It's doing exceptionally well. It has not done anything from the last so many years. It's just in the last two, three quarters that it has started performing. And we believe that uh, the kind of euphoria in the uh, BSU basket uh, has not taken place in Bama Lorry as such. And despite the strong fundamentals it has, one should continue to hold a minimum target of 300 plus in the next six months is quite possible. So I would suggest hold. And any tips to around 220, 225 for any reason whatsoever, be the market or what, can be a good levels to accumulate. Right. Uh, this one's come from Tina. This one is also for you, uh, Rajesh. She wants to know about a cement counter that she can look to enter right now for the longer term. Which one do you think makes a cut given the fact that be it the large cap or the mid cap space, that uh, cement universe is pretty large despite the consolidation that's happening in the sector? See, you said it right. It's a very uh, large space with a lot of companies in that uh, some uh, geographical divisions are also there, but still going forward, I think for a longer term horizon, if somebody wants to be into cement ultra tech can be a best choice, but somebody play, uh, trying to play safe can go ahead for Grassim because it's a holding company of ultra tech. In the mid cap space, we are very bullish on Bilda Corp and Dalmia Bharat. These are the two names which we are bullish on the mid cap space. So depending on your risk appetite, you can go for either a large cap or mid cap as suggested. All right, Rajesh, uh, once again coming to you because this one is a, uh, on a store, this query is on a stock we don't discuss um, quite often. Um, do you track permanent magnets by any chance? PM Methivanan is holding shares at a price of 1200 rupees. Whether to hold this one or move out of this stock? I'm really sorry, we don't track this. All right, no worries. Let me take the next query then. And um, Kunal, this one is on Angel One. Uh, Bishaka has has 
is been holding 10 shares at a price of 1560 rupees the stock uh, the company did come out with its earnings uh, seems like a bit disappointment uh, what's the outlook uh, on this counter yeah, i think with an rsi of almost 87 88 on uh, the weekly charts for angel one and i think if i'm not wrong almost uh, 80 plus for the stock on the monthly time frame there was bound to be a point where the stock would be overbought and get into a correction now you know what what this correction has done is taken the stock back towards the last uh, 15 days of uh, price uptrend for itself so i think 15 days back the stock was almost at this 3400 mark and you know after a rally towards 3400 from 3400 to 3800 3900 the stock has come back towards the 3400 level so that's what corrections do and especially at overbought zones of indicators or, or stocks so best way to try and trade is that uh, have a trailing stop loss i would suggest keep a 50 day moving average as a trailing stop loss currently placed at 3200 for uh, angel one if it breaks below those levels i think it could be a good time where you should be looking to book entire profits all right this one is also coming to you kunal golden tobacco do you track this particular counter by any chance have you seen this chart uh not really i think it's a z group stock asm uh, series stock so don't track it all right so let me take the next one this one is coming from n uh, raja ramesh from guntur and he wants to know uh, about one to two real estate stock that he can look to invest in for a period of three years. Uh, Rajesh, real estate stock. Uh, we've seen what's happening in the space over the last two years. If you look at the residential market is on an uptrend. You saw the realty index also over the last few months also on an uptrend. Now what should you do? Do you think that you should go ahead and chase this particular sector? And if you have to, then which are the stocks that you should uh, invest in? See, it's quite surprising. I think I, I would say it's, we have been positively surprised about the kind of way the reality pack has done, not only in the uh, stock market per length, but in the user segment also. We have seen last week DLF uh, uh, selling out everything uh, in the entire uh, stock uh, for around 7,400 odd crores in just pre-launch offer. So that's the way things are moving. I think the uh, companies have also reduced debt to a very large extent, but not to forget that these kind of companies, especially in the real estate, there are a lot of problems like uh, of inventory, corporate governance and other things. It's better to play uh, a proxy play on uh, real estate, but still somebody wants to looking at DLF, uh, at a real estate, I would say DLF, Gordage Properties or Shoba would be a best choice. Or else one can have a look at Century Textiles, which has a, 100% subsidiary called Bilda Estates, and that's doing very well. Uh, it has uh, developed properties in Worli, and now they are uh, doing properties in Bangalore too. And the valuations are also very uh, lucrative, I would say. Uh, Century Textile can give you around 20-30% return in the next one year. Right, uh, moving on then, and the next query is from Anupama from Abu Dhabi and Kunal, she's holding 100 shares of Marico from a price of 549 rupees. Right now, she's at a loss. Good time to exit or continue to hold on? I think Marico is a stock uh, or you know, Marico and uh, the entire FMCG are, are pack of stocks which you should hold on from a long term play because you know, in maybe in the best of the market times, they may not reward you. But when the market gets into a choppy phase and when you're looking to park money into some relatively safer stocks, Marico and you know, such kind of stocks, they generally uh, you know, uh, hold the portfolio uh, quite well. So I would believe that if it's part of you know, a larger construct of your portfolio and maybe occupies you know, a 3, 4, 5% kind of a share or you know, a holding in terms of your entire portfolio, you should definitely look to hold on. All right, this one also is coming to you, Kunal, from Yogarani, who's writing to us from Saudi Arabia. She wants to know whether she should buy Hindustan Copper at the current levels for a swing uh, trade. If yes, then she wants to know what sort of a target she can keep in mind. See, I would suggest to wait out for another maybe a couple of uh, you know weeks because the first round of correction seems to have happened for Hindustan Copper. The stock from 291, I think did yesterday corrected back towards 255, 256 levels. Uh, it's gone to a bounce. Maybe this bounce could extend for another, uh, you know, 280 levels for Hindustan Copper. But ideally, I would probably expect the stock to get into a second leg of correction and maybe come back towards the 250 levels. So a better price, if you ask me to buy, would be closer to 250 mark for Hindustan Copper. All right. Once again, coming to you, Kunal, because uh, Balaji from Chennai wants to know, is this a good time to buy Cochin Shipyard at current market price and any short to medium term target? Well, uh, it's going to be a tough one because, you know, buying the stock at uh, current levels where the uh, monthly RSI is almost at 84, 85 and 
the weeklies are almost again at 84, 83, 84 levels for the stock could be a bit, bit of a steep ask. You may consider buying the stock, but I would suggest that keep a stop loss, which could be uh, pretty much on the tighter range. So drop your position size, first of all. And then if you're looking at a trailing stop loss, keep uh, 6622, which is that 50 day moving average is a trailing stop loss as of now. All right, this one's come from Catherine from Mumbai. This one is for you, Rajesh. And it looks, looks like today is your day to just uh, talk about stocks and give your advice on stocks because she wants some three stocks that she can look to invest in the longer term. No doubt you spoke about Century Textiles when it comes uh, to the realty uh, pack, but uh, which are the other stocks that uh, think, you think the shine bright and now is the time that you can take the plunge? See, as we discussed, Reliance would be the number one stock, I would say. The KPX intensity has been inching up due to uh, OTC, EBITDA was up. Uh, refining margins have go are going up. Oil to chemical business is providing cash for future investments. And the management's comments about reducing net debt is very positive. And we talked about 5G rollout and all that's going to increase the tariffs in the geo venture. And when it comes to retail, where other retail chains are having 800 odd stores, this is a company uh, which adds 800 odd stores every quarter. As of March 2023, there were 18,000 stores. So on every parameter, Reliance fits the bill. One should continue to hold this, uh, accumulate this for a longer term uh, time horizon. By longer term, I mean at least three to four years down the line. And the second one would be IRCTC, where you find that all the four divisions, be it uh, rail, near, uh, ticketing, catering, or tourism, all are doing well. Debt-free company, monopoly in two, three businesses. And with the kind of launches we are seeing in Vande Bharat and Teja is doing to, going to do well. So these are the two companies which are, we are very bullish on for medium to long term. All right, so that's the day coming in on IRCTC. But with this viewers, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to take more of your stock related queries. Welcome back to Buy Now Sell Now, a show where we get you answers for all your stock related queries. And continuing the same, Kunal coming to you for the next query, and this one is on Bandhan Bank. Uh, Sain Gupta has bought these shares at a price of 270 rupees, sitting at a loss in this one. What to do next? Should he continue to hold on or move out? You know, it's a very tricky chart because I think just about uh, two weeks back when the stock was at 260 odd levels, it looked like that the stock is coming out of a major double bottom pattern uh, spread, I think, over the last six months or seven months for Bandhan Bank. But then surprisingly, the stock has just fallen very sharply from those 260 levels and come back towards 230 mark. So now what matters is the second attempt, if it happens for Bandhan Bank, about that 260 mark, uh, that could lead to a very strong breakout for the stock. But on the other hand, what I would suggest is keep a stop loss of uh, maybe 222 on the trade, triple two on the trade. In case of the stock breaks below those levels, you could look to exit. All right, this one's coming from Venkatesh. He's writing to us from Hyderabad and he has 50 shares of Marico, which he purchased at the levels of 553 rupees per share, holding on since uh, September 2022. Uh, wants to know whether he should stay put with this one or uh, look to exit. What's your take, Rajesh, on this one? See, this is a very strong company with a very uh, strong balance sheet, strong portfolio of brands, Parachute, Revive, and all those in with this. And the numbers have been pretty good in the last so many quarters, but it's really constantly given good numbers. I think if somebody is looking for a long-term horizon, one should continue to hold unless until he's in a, somebody is in a hurry to uh, for cash. So for a long term, it's a hold. If it falls to around 400, 500, it's a good buy. This one is for you, Kunal, from Vishwanathan uh, Nair. And he wants to know whether it's a good uh, time to uh, enter VIP as well as Varak Engineering. May not be for VIP, but for Varak, you can look to enter at current levels. VIP is trading below the 200-day moving average and showing a lot of in inconsistency in terms of trends. So, uh, which means it could be a bit tricky to try and uh, buy the stock at current levels. Varak, on the other hand, has confirmed a breakout. Uh, it's a multi-year breakout for the stock. I think breaking past about 2021-22 highs of, I think, around 470 mark for Varak, uh, you know, some time back. So, that's a stock which you can consider buying. All right. Uh, this one is coming from uh, Srinivasan from Chennai. This one is for you, Rajesh. He want, he's holding all cargo Gati at a uh, price of around 127 rupees per share. He wants to know what's your outlook on that particular counter. Should he hold or look to exit uh, that uh, particular stock? 
I think one should try to exit this stock. This stock had done nothing on the bosses from the last so many quarters, I would say, and I don't think in the near future it's going to do any miracle. So it's better to switch from this to some better performing names like maybe in the logistics space, Concord can give you a better return than what I've had. Okay, Seema from Lucknow Kunal, uh, PCBL and Happiest Mind wants to know whether she should look to enter these uh, counters at current levels or should uh, wait for some sort of a correction. PCBL definitely is reacting to his earnings yesterday. The earnings came during market hours today as well. The stock is reacting to that. But uh, do you think right levels to enter these counters or wait for correction? Yeah, I think uh, both the charts are attractive. Happiest Minds also, I think. Uh, but remember, I think both these stocks are high beta. So whenever, and uh, if in case the market gets into any kind of a corrective wave, uh, say over the next uh, you know few weeks, you could probably be at a point where many of these stocks can have capacity to correct by even a margin of 10 to 15 percent in a very short span of time. So just try and uh, you know uh, have a proportion of your position size in that context. But yeah, I think both the charts are attractive. PCBL even after yesterday's move, the breakout seems to be quite strong. The stock has broken past about 275 mark, which was the previous uh, two month back high for. PCBL momentum again and volumes are also quite attractive for happiest minds also I think the stock at 940 levels is on the verge of a inverted head and shoulder breakout spread over the last five months six months from August 2023 for the stock so that also looks attractive. Rajesh uh, Yuvraj from Chennai is holding 75 shares of Angel One he wants to hold on to this counter for the long term he's saying he's not perturbed by the fact that the stock is falling today on back of his earnings but uh, he wants to know whether it is advisable to hold on to it or no, and also Polycap, should he look to enter right now? See, taking one by one, Angel One, no doubt, is a good company. The number of uh, additions uh, in the last quarter have been quite attractive, given uh, blowing out good numbers. But today, just because of number the reaction, it's correcting. And even on valuation parameters, I think it's somewhat overstated. Some one can look to enter at around 2800, 3000 odd levels at this point of time, booking out of profit uh, would be an advice. As far as Polycap is concerned, it's one of our strong company in FMNG business, doing very well in buyers. Numbers have been good. There have been some news about the IT reads and all, and for that reason, the stock has corrected quite a lot. I think somebody with a, a medium. Uh, risk appetite can go long in a small proportion in the stock too. If the uh, clarification on the IT rates or somewhat comes out, I think that can the stock can bounce back. But again, I would like to reiterate only those uh, investors who have a medium uh, horizon, medium term horizon, and the good uh, risk appetite. All right, uh, moving on then uh, to the next query. And um, Rajesh, uh, this query is on Hutko. Uh, Rita from Kolkata has bought 1,000 shares at a price of 128 rupees. What to do next in this one? See, uh, if I talk of valuation, valuation have become stretched. But the uh, thing is, the PSU basket is doing very well. And uh, I won't be surprised if the stock touches 150 in the near term. But still, I would say keep your buying price as stop loss and uh, carry on with their stocks. Although I don't talk about stop loss and resistance, but in this case, it's necessary to keep a stop loss because uh, the valuations are stretched, but the PSU basket is in the limelight and it's trading uh, very brilliantly, I would say. It can touch 150. All right. Uh, this was from Ravi Babu from Mumbai. Kunal, for you, he took Infosys 1600 January put option at 35. He wants to, should he wait or lo look to book uh, losses at a price of 9? So I'm not sure the current market price. Uh, I'm, so I'm assuming it's nine for uh, Infosys, uh, the put option. Uh, the stock is looking actually quite attractive. We've been bullish on Infi large cap IT stocks. And in fact, my advice, uh, even just one day prior to the results, was to try and go for a, a bullish uh, you know, side strategy for Infosys because we were expecting the stock to get to a, at least a 5% up move. Even if you would have missed out on that, buying on the day, uh, post the results uh, you know, for the stock, even with a gap up opening, I think would have been a better strategy. So I would suggest that uh, the stock may not be able to come back to a 1600 mark for the rest of the series. So it's better to try and uh, book your losses over here. All right. The next query, Rajesh, is coming from uh, Subrata Mukherjee. And he wants to know that can he go ahead and buy GSFC or Chambal fertilizers? Uh, and is there any expectation that before the budget, these stocks can rally? See, there has been a lot of hype on this budget, but as far as my knowledge goes, this would be an interim budget with no major announcement whatsoever because uh, 
uh, whatever fresh budget would come would come after the new government is in so putting a lot of expectation in budget won't be a right strategy i would say but as far as gujarat state fertilizer is concerned it's a very good stock uh, doing very well holding in different uh, gujarat based companies and the valuations are really attractive one can go land forget about the budget and all take a time horizon of maybe one year and uh, you can expect a return of 20-25% from the current market price. Right, this one is coming from Prathmesh from Mumbai. Kunal, this one is for you particularly. Uh, RT Industries, he wants to know whether he can buy this counter for a period of six months only. And if not, if you as I said, don't suggest RT Industries, then which is another alternative you would suggest him to buy? I think it's a good stock, but uh, may not be the best price to try and buy because the stock has just gone through a first phase of retracements from 660 levels. Uh, it's come back towards the almost the 600 mark. So maybe the first tranche of buying which you can do could be at current levels. But I ideally believe that at least a 15% to 18% correction generally happens into these kind of names before the stocks get into a, a good risk reward play. So you can start buying maybe first tranche at current levels, wait out for another 7-8% correction which means say closer to 560-565 approximately could be a better level where you may look to average further for RT. Right, so that's the day coming in on RT Industries. But with this viewers, it's once again time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. Just quickly taking the note of Bank of Maharashtra earnings in the bottom of your screen. As you can see that the profit has seen a healthy growth of the year in your basis. 33.6% uptick coming at 1036. NII also seeing a healthy growth on year in your basis. If you look at the NPA numbers, uh, they have actually bettered when you compare it on a quarter on quarter basis. So if you look at the gross NPA, it's coming at 2.04% versus 2.19% a quarter ago, while the net NPA is coming at around 0.22% versus 0.23% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. So that's the way how the numbers are looking like for Bank of Maharashtra. The stock is trading higher by about 2% or so. Uh, let's move on then. And the next query that I have is coming from Satyajit and he wants to know PM Industries. Uh, Rajesh, is this a good counter to invest in for the longer term? See, this is a basically auto ancillary industry which was uh, into rear view mirrors and uh, lights and all. But, uh, especially catering to two-wheeler OEMs. Now they have started moving into uh, EV se segment also and the numbers have been uh, improving in the last two, three quarters. A target of 2700 uh, can be kept on this, although it, uh, it might correct somewhat because of the kind of run-up which it had seen in the recent past, but 2700 in the next six months is quite possible. All right, moving on to the next query then, and uh, this one is coming on um, MTNL. And Rajesh, any views on this one? Um, uh, because a viewer named Ashish has bought the shares 1,000 in quantity from a price of 25 rupees. Is it in at good profits in this one? But can he continue holding this for the next eight months, maybe? And what's the outlook? Uh, companies like MTNL, ITI has been in news for the last so many years. Every time some news comes, starts, uh, start moving out without any change in fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there is any change in fundamentals as of now. And it's very uh, exciting to know that the gentleman is sitting on a profit. It was prudent to book profit because when the market goes into a downturn or the correction happens, these kind of stocks would be a pain in your portfolio. So it's better you book profit or you are not comfortable booking profit, at least partial profit is advised. Kunal, coming to you, Canfin Homes is a stock. Nitya from Chennai is asking about the uh, counter. What should she do? She, her buy price is 790 rupees per share. Continue to hold on. Uh, I mean, just, the, just that the stock is going through a major time-wise correction over the last five, six months. It's been just stuck into a range. But I think there have been two or three attempts towards the 800, 820 mark for Canfin Home. So maybe if you're looking to trade, then I think a better strategy is in case if the stock comes back towards the 820-830 mark, then I think you can look to book profits over there and then closer to 760-750 yet again could be a zone where you may look to buy back again. Right. Uh, Kunal, one query addressed to you. This one is from Rakesh Gupta and he intends to buy three of the banking names, Dhan Lakshmi Bank, South India Bank as well as Yes Bank. Any of the stock that you like at this point in time for a fresh entry? 
So I would recommend uh, you, know, you can go for South Indian Bank at current levels uh, instead of Dhan Lakshmi Bank because of the recent run up. You may probably consider uh, maybe Bank of India or Union Bank. They could be better bets. And from the larger cap name on the PSU side, I would believe Bank of Baroda could be a better bet at the current levels of 230 approximately. All right, with that, let's kick start with the rapid fire then. And the first one is coming from a big fan of yours, Kunal. This one is from Anand. He wants to know, is the defense uh, story in the defense stock still on? If yes, which one should he invest in? Thank you so much for that. Uh, it's still on. I would consider uh, HAL and BEL as more prominent bets on the defense pack. All right, Kunal Anshali from Nasik has bought BPCL at a price of 360 rupees. Book out profits or continue to hold? Continue to hold. All right, right time to buy a Yes Bank and idea. Kunal Vishwa, uh, sorry, uh, Rajesh Vishwas wants to know. See, it's only for risk. Uh, a person having good risk appetite, Yes Bank can be a good bet. Okay, Rajesh, can Jay Devappa uh, can enter Amrutanjan or Lux Industries at current market price with a minimum investment of three years? Lux is a good buy. All right, this one is uh, coming in from Raghunandan and Kunal. A BHEL average buy price around eighty rupees per share. He wants to know whether he can uh, sell around five hundred shares of BHEL right now. Not sure if it's partial exit or uh, or complete exit. If it's a partial exit, you can go ahead. Okay, Rajesh, what's your advice on Dredgen Corporation? Uh, Vivek has been holding 300 shares at a price of 450 rupees. What's the long-term outlook? Yeah, after a gap of almost nine, ten years, the stock has started moving up. Yesterday, it made a 20% circuit. I think one can continue to hold this stock. All right, uh, this one is coming from Alexander from Chennai. What's the future of life insurance stock, and which one can he bet on, Rajesh? La LIC, the best choice. Okay, Kanal, can Karthik enter AB Capital or Raymonds for a short-term trade? Anytime AB Capital. All right, this one is coming in uh, from a uh, viewer, Badri. HDFC Bank, Kunal is holding 100 shares at a price of 1500. Kotak Bank at 1780. What's the future outlook for both of these counters? The only results could be the impediment, but otherwise I'm bullish on both of these names. Okay, Rajesh, what's your advice on Phenolex Cable? Um, Vani has been holding 150 shares from a price of 823 rupees. Sell or hold? Hold. All right, and uh, the last uh, query is coming from uh, V Morali, and he has a lot of stocks. But Rajesh, he wants to know about Uflex India. Uh, how is this particular counter looking like, and should he look to invest in it right now? At this point of time, it's an avoid. All right, so that's the day coming in on Uflex. But with this viewers, we are completely out of time in this edition of Buy Now Sell Now as well as the rapid fire session. Kunal and Rajesh, thank you so much for joining us today on ET Now and helping all our viewers resolve their queries. But with this viewers, it's time to say goodbye. It's goodbye from me and Cheryl and the entire team. But don't go anywhere. Markets at noon will take the action ahead.